What is going on everybody? Tech Enthusiast here and in this video I'll show you how to create a minimalistic overlay like the Steam Deck. Now the ROG Ally does have an overlay however it is horizontal and it can be a little intrusive so I'll show you how to create a horizontal overlay which is a lot cleaner and I've also added a clock so we can keep an eye on the time. Now with that being said let's get started. So we need to install two softwares HW Info 64 and River Tuna Server Statistics, RTSS for short. We don't need to install MSI Afterburner. I will leave links in the description. Now once you have them installed, they should show up in the start menu. If not, click on all apps and you should be able to find it from there and open the apps. So I'm gonna open HW Info 64 first, select yes, then select settings and we need to check a few boxes. Minimize main window on startup, minimize sensors on startup, auto start, and then shared memory support. This is absolutely critical. This needs to be enabled so we can pull a few data from there. And this will disable after 12 hours, but you can always enable it. Or you can buy the license if you want. But I will be using the free version. Then click on OK, then start. You can enable these boxes here, but I'm just going to click on close for now. And then we need to uh, run RTSS. So select yes again. And this is now running in the system tray. So double click it to open it. And we need to enable the first two boxes. Start with Windows and show on screen display. Now on the bottom here you can see where the overlay will show and you also have the option to change the uh, font size like so. But for this video I will be using the default font size. Okay so next we're going to click on setup then go to plugins and double click on overlay editor. Once that is open maximize the window then go to layouts and then select new. Next go to data sources, edit, add and internal HAL is already selected. We're going to scroll down slowly and then select CPU usage, RAM usage, then scroll down again and then select GPU1 usage and GPU1 power then OK. Then click on add again then from the drop down select HW Info 64. Now this list is a lot longer so we're going to scroll down carefully and then we need to find the following CPU TCTL T die. So basically this is the die temperature and then scroll down again and select CPU package power so we can see the CPU wattage. And then we're going to scroll down near the bottom and look for frame rate and charge level. So once they're selected, click on OK. So we should have a total of 8 right now. So click on OK, then go to Layers, then click on Add. And I'm going to double click here and I'm going to give my first layer name as BAT, which is short for battery. Then go back to Layers and to quickly add it, we can just press the Insert button. So my new layer, I will move it across three blocks to the right as I have spaced it out how I want it. Then go into Data Sources find the data that you want and copy the name exactly as shown Then click on OK then double click on the layer then select all put in the percentage sign then paste the data name then the percentage sign and because I want to show in percentage I will put the percentage sign again then click on OK and as you can see we got the battery percentage up Next, I want to put in the separator. So again, I'm going to move it three blocks to the right. Double click 
and this should be near the top left of your keyboard and then OK. So my first section is done and the next bit is going to be my CPU. It's pretty self-explanatory just like the battery. I will speed up the video until we get to the RAM section as I want to show you something a little different. Now under CPU I want to see three different things so that's going to be the CPU percentage, the CPU wattage and the CPU temperature. So I'm going to pull at least two blocks from each other in terms of the spacing but it all depends on what statistics you want to see. Maybe you don't want to see them, it's totally up to you. But anyway when we got to the temperature we're going to go back into data sources and copy the Celsius sign from there as that's probably the easiest way to put that on. So now we're coming on to GPU and for GPU I'm not going to have the temperature right now. That couldn't be on a different uh, overlay. So now we're going to put in the GPU wattage and it's totally up to you if you want to have lowercase or uppercase W. My separator is going to be at least three blocks away. Okay so we're on the RAM and this is going to be from the internal HAL. So when you copy the name it has to be exactly case sensitive or it's not going to work. Now for RAM you can see we've got 4000 megabytes and the text itself is long which is not going to work for this overlay. So we're going to go back into data sources, edit, then go to RAM usage and then units we're going to change that to GB. Then under format we're going to put in percentage dot 1F and that should give us a decimal point and we can also add that decimal point under wattage if we want but again that text is long don't worry about that we're going to go back into data sources and then we're going to go back to RAM usage and this time under correction formula we're going to put x forward slash 1024 basically dividing it and click on OK and as you can see here the text has shrunk. Now we need to correct the MB. We're going to change that to GB and then click on OK. And as you can see 4 gigabytes, which works perfect. OK so we're going to put in the divider or the separator icon and then we're going to continue as normal. I'm going to slightly speed up the video here. So the next layer is going to be FPS. Once that is done we're going to put in the layer and then put in the text well the sign is going to be less than fr greater than sign then click on ok that will give us our fps value then we're going to put the separator icon again and then a new layer so this is going to be the frame graph so if you want to adjust the size you need to copy the exact text i'm going to put here so that's going to be the less than sign then g equals frame time Then we're going to put in comma zero comma zero comma one comma zero comma one hundred and then we're going to put in comma zero and then the greater than sign and click on OK. So this will allow us to stretch the graph as long as we want. Don't worry about now as we can adjust it later after we add the clock. So we're going to put in a new layer, double click into it, then put in the following text. So it's going to be the less than sign, then type in time equals percentage H for hour colon percentage M for minutes, then the greater than sign, then click on OK. So that's going to give us our current time. So I'm going to move that to the top right hand corner. I'm not going to move it to the very end. Again it's up to you. Then I'm going to stretch this graph and then leave about three block spacing and that should do it. Okay so what's left now is basically to change all of the colors from orange to custom colors. So I'm going to start off with battery and then select the first box here and then the color icon and you know you can practically use any color that you've got here. You've also got custom colors, more predefined colors on the bottom. So this is the color that I'm going to go with. Once that is done, for my next layer, I'm going to choose white. 
So basically the results is going to be white for me. And then the separator icon that is going to be purple or indigo. I'm trying to match the Steam Deck, but you can change it anytime anyway. So it's not a big deal right now. So once you have the color select OK, and that's basically my first section done. And then I'm going to do uh, the background. So I'm just going to select the first layer and stretch it all the way. So basically I want to give an opacity so we can see a faint background for these values. So double click and then select the second box. Then click on the tiny box there. And then for opacity, I'm going to use 30. Again, you can go slightly different to me, but 30 works great. So once that is done, click on OK. So that is done. And the next bit I'll show you with all the colors added in. OK, so this is my finished overlay. And as you can see, each of the categories have different colors. And I have to say, I am very pleased at how it has turned out. It does look very good. One thing I want to mention is that I did change the spacing for the CPU and GPU results. You may want to do that. Next, go to layouts and save. We don't want to lose anything. Now, if you want to share this overlay, you're going to go to export and save it in a folder. Now, if you want to use someone else's overlay, for example, my one, you're going to click on import. And for my example, I've saved it in the documents folder. So the second overlay, I've called it ROG2. And as you can see, it is slightly more detailed. And it, again, it is a variation from the Steam Deck. So for GPU, this time I've added the temperature. I've also added VRAM. For battery, I've put in the battery wattage use. There is a minus sign here. If you plug in your ally to a power source, that minus sign will disappear. The alignment will change. There's nothing I can do about that. And lastly, I've added the battery remaining in minutes. Now to change the overlay, we're going to go to layouts, then load. So I'll take you to the default folder, which is in drive C, program files x86, river tuna statistics server, plugins, client, overlays, and here they are. So this is my minimalistic one, and it is simple as that. Now, if you want to change your layout, you will be in the default folder automatically. So I'm just going to cancel this for now and close this window. And we're going to go to the final bit, which is setting up the hotkey handler. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to the armory crate, go to the settings tab, go to configure, under gamepad mode, configure. And my hotkey is going to be with M1 and I've given it F12 key. You can give it any key you want. This is just my example. Then we're going to go back to RTSS hotkey handler and under toggle on screen display, I've got F12 and that's it. It is simple as that. So I'm just going to click on OK, then OK. Make sure you minimize this window because if you close it, the overlay is not going to work. OK, so here is the new overlay in action. Now, if I press the M1 key, you can see I can toggle it off and then on again. Now, when you create your own overlay or edit someone else's overlay, you can edit it. You can add other statistics from the data sources, for example, CPU and GPU clock speeds. It will be very interesting to see what you guys come up with. OK, so that wraps it up for this video. If you have found it useful, give it a thumbs up. If you are new here, then please do consider subscribing as I have more videos coming up. Thanks for watching and I will catch up with you in the next video.